Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you everything that's new in the Construct 3 release 171 uh, stable release. Uh, let's get started. So the main uh, new feature of this uh, release is a new behavior called the move to behavior. Um, this is kind of like an alternative to the tween behavior except it moves objects at a fixed speed. So you just say, uh, for example, move to this position and it will move towards it uh, with an acceleration and deceleration. That's not normally possible with a tween, so this is why it's useful as a separate behavior. So if I run this project, you can see when I click, the uh, sprite will just move towards the point um, that I've clicked on, and it's using an acceleration, deceleration. It also supports rotating the object, as you can see there. It's super easy to use. Uh, it just involves one single action, which is move to a position. Um, you can also do waypoints and there's various other features. So this is a, a useful behavior for lots of kinds of uh, movements in games. Um, this all, this uh, The new behavior also integrates nicely with the new timelines feature. So here this uh, demo has a timeline which draws a path throughout this uh, simple layout. And if I click edit you can see the path it will take uh, along these nodes and if I play that with the timeline you can see the speed keeps changing between the points uh, because of the um, you see all these points are a fixed distance uh, sorry a fixed time apart in the timeline uh, but the distance changes so the speed the object moves at changes as it moves along this isn't ideal for something like a patrol in the game so uh, the move to behavior also has this move along path action which will take a path from a timeline and it'll just look at these points here and ignore the times uh, on the timeline. So it'll just use this as a series of waypoints to move along uh, in the path. Um, and now if you preview this you can see it's moving at a, a fixed speed along those points um, which is a nice way to make a sort of predefined path to follow um, for an object. So this is good for a kind of simple kind of um, enemy movement for example. If you want to find those demos, you can find them if you just search for um, move to in the start page and you can see both of those examples there. Speaking of examples and timelines, we have three new examples based on the, uh, the, the relatively new timelines feature now. Um, here's one which uh, just shows basic playback. So people uh, often ask questions about how to get started with timelines and you see there's a very simple little walking animation I've put together there uh, and you use the timeline plugin to play a timeline so this is just a very simple example of how to play uh, a timeline in your project and you can see it in action there. The next thing people ask about is how to play that timeline with different instances so you see the timeline is designed with one sprite um, if I search for the next one, time, so you can look at the timeline instances example, which demonstrates this. And we have three sprites here, and once again the timeline is designed just with one sprite, uh, but we want to be able to play this timeline with the other sprites here, which are in a family called characters. Yeah. Uh, and so this comes down to the new uh, set instance action of the timeline plugin, and this shows a demonstration of how to use it. So this action essentially sets which object to use for the next time the timeline is played, so the next, the following play action. And in this example, it will use the one that we click or tap on. And so if I uh, play this, the first one plays by default, and then if I click on another one, it will play the timeline with that instance instead of the default instance, which is this monkey ball character. So that will show you how to get started using timelines with different instances, which is a very common request. Uh, and last of all, on the timeline examples, there's just another timeline drawing example here, which demonstrates what's possible with the new timelines feature, uh, which is a bit more of an advanced example, showing Bezier curves and writing out, uh, essentially drawing a timeline path onto a drawing canvas object. So you can have a look at that to see what's possible with the new timelines feature. Uh, we're very excited about the new timelines feature. We think it, it's a great new uh, feature. It should be interesting if you're an animator or you want to make um, cutscenes and things like that. So uh, if you haven't tried it out already, now is a great time. Try out the timelines feature, see what it can do. 
Okay, next up, uh, this release we've made some updates to how Android permissions work. So this is specific for publishing uh, Android apps. And the main difference is how the um, permissions work. You, you can see here, um, previously the camera permission um, also required microphone permission. These are now separate options, so you can request each individually, so you can make sure your app has the least permissions necessary. Additionally, we, we fixed what was more or less a bug. Uh, Android apps always requested the right external storage permission, even if uh, it didn't use external storage. Um, so we've now removed this, so by default an app won't request this permission, which again is good to reduce the number of permissions your apps request to the minimum. Uh, just in case you do need that for some reason, perhaps using a third-party add-on, uh, you can um, re-enable that here, uh, but most apps won't need that. Uh, next up, uh, there's an, a, new uh, a new experimental feature that which we're trying out. Uh, I'm not going to cover it um, here, but it's if you check out this thread in the forum, experimental local file and folder saves in Chrome, this has got instructions on how to try it out. And we're experimenting with a feature so that you can save folder-based projects directly from the Chrome browser and hopefully other browsers in the future as well. And this also means you can save uh, single file projects on disk and uh, open them again from disk and save back over that file that you opened. So previously you could only uh, save to the cloud or the browser or download a copy which just uh, goes into your downloads folder. This allows more sort of like a native app uh, access to your um, project files and uh, the project file uh, folders is um, new for the browser. Um, so if, if you'd like to use this, uh, definitely give it a, a, a try. Uh, let us know if you have any feedback. Um, it requ currently requires Chrome 78, which is a beta release, but you'll, this will, um, in the next week or two, this will become the new stable release, so it will become uh, easier to try out. Uh, this is particularly useful if you're using source control or something else which relies on the folder-based projects. So you'll be able to do that from the browser now. Um, other than that, there's, as usual, there's been tons of upda other updates along the way. There's uh, new methods and features in the scripting uh, future for JavaScript coding. There's loads of bug fixes and plenty more. Um, if you want to uh, see the full details, as ever, be sure to check out the full release notes, which you can find on the website. That's all for now. Thanks, and we hope you enjoy using Construct.